That's kind of exciting for an EV dyno run. Hey everyone, Sam here with AEM EV and today we have the first ever full electric Formula Drift car built by the guys over at Napoleon Motorsports. And as you can see, since the car is here at our facility, we've done a couple updates to it. So let's take a, look, a quick walk around the car and talk about some of the things that's on the car and some of the things that we've updated. As you can see here, the heart of the whole system is the battery pack. It is a 1P120S pack, 120 cells in series for a total of a maximum of 450 volts. But this car normally runs at about 400, 405 volts or so. This car originally came equipped with an EV controls controller to control the Tesla large drive unit. While that system works for a hobbyist level car, it's quite lacking in a motorsport environment. So what we had to do was pull the entire system out and update it to our AMEV VCU 200 that allows us to have full integration with the rest of the system's tunability and data acquisition that's needed in racing. So for the first step, all of it had to come apart and get redesigned. The drive unit, as I mentioned, had to come out. We swapped it over to a base unit, opened up that base unit, installed one of our Tesla control boards into it and threw it back into the car. From there, we moved on to the wiring harness. The entire harness had to come out of the car, designed the entire harness in-house, and sent the designs out to our friends down at RyeWire. Ryan and his team down there did an amazing job building this harness in a, in a very, very short amount of time. So let's talk a little bit about what was updated in this vehicle. At the top of the chain, was one of our VCU 200s that's controlling everything. It's talking to the drive unit, it's talking to the two PDU-8s on the car. All, all that data is being sent to the dash for both display and logging. All of our switch controls and everything's all being done by our eight button keypad. And all of this is being managed and monitored by the VCU 200. So up front, we have one of our PDU-8s controlling all of the front devices. So our headlights, our wiper, our power steering. And then in the back of the car, the contactor box. So our negative, positive, pre-charge contactors, parking Lights, everything in the back is being controlled by our PDU-8, which one of the great things is about having a, a PDU like this, where it's a distributed system, we can install the PDUs close to the devices that we're, we're controlling, and all that we're wiring to that, that PDU is just power supply and CAN. It simplifies the harness and makes everything a lot easier to install since you're not running in large bundles of connectors through a firewall hole of some sort and it's just power ground and CAN. And you probably saw some of the footage in the beginning. We were running the car on the dyno and some of you guys are probably curious about the results. It ended up at 480-ish newton meters of torque and 260 kilowatts of power. And one of the things that we like to talk about is that torque delivery. At 480 foot pounds at around 2000 RPM, it's instant. I actually have to roll into the throttle because if I stomped on it any time any earlier, it would just light the tires up on the dyno and it wouldn't really work. So I actually had to physically limit that torque delivery by rolling into the throttle. And that's one, that's one of the things with electric motors, instant. It's, it, you can't really capture that instantaneousness until you drive it. That's one of the things that make this car very competitive in, in the drift scene is that instant torque. It's like clutch kicking without having to clutch kick. You just stomp on that pedal and just lights the tires up. So let's talk a little bit about that horsepower number. Um, though it's a bit on the low side, we are limited by the battery. In a typical ICE engine, being limited by a fuel system, your fuel system is what's delivering that power. Regardless of the size of your engine, regardless of the size of your turbo, if your fuel system can't keep up, that's all the power you're gonna make. Same in this sense, the battery is at its limits and that's where we're at. I'm sure if we could throw a bigger battery or, or a battery that can deliver that amount of current and maintain a voltage at that power level, the power level of this, this vehicle will go up as well. We got a couple things left to button up on this car to take it out to the Holly High Voltage event up in Sonoma. I look forward to seeing you guys out there. If you guys like what you saw and want to see more, don't forget to click like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Peace out. Catch you guys next time.